Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Peter McLaughlin. I'm uh, Chair of the Hennepin County Regional Railroad Authority and Chair of the County's Transit Improvement Board. I'm Paul Krause, uh, Dakota County Commissioner and Vice Chair of the uh, CTA. Jim McDonough, Ramsey County Commissioner and Secretary of the County Transit Improvement Board. Uh, Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, this is still a very bad idea. Uh, <laughs> And Representative Leidiger, I just want to say that, that your contention that we're spend your that there's going to be 46 million dollars more spent on transit is just not true. Where I come from, if you take money out of one pocket, that would be the CTIP pocket, stick it in another pocket, and then spend it. That's not spending more money. This money, when it was over in this pocket, was going to get spent for transit. So the contention that you're spending more money, 46 million dollars more on transit, is just not true. So, I mean, what it reminds me of is like telling your kid, tell your kid, go out and get a job, buy a car so I don't have to schlep you around anymore. And then he gets the job, you grab his paycheck each, each week, he gets bad credit, can't pay for his car, and he still can't get around. That's what's going on here. The state said go out, get a job, that is, impose a tax in this case, get a job, and buy some transportation for yourself. That's what we did as county. And now you're, you're taking the money, you're ruining, you're potentially ruining our credit rating, and it's really not improving the transportation system at all. And you're not spending more on transit in this region, Representative Leidiger. So that, I think, need, the record needs to be set straight, that more is not being spent on transit, less is being spent on tra transit. Second, it's a terrible precedent a terrible precedent to steal local sales tax. Local governments go out with the authority of the state and impose a sales tax. That's a, that's a bond between the taxpayers in our local jurisdictions and us, the local decision makers. That was permitted by the state. For the state of Minnesota to come in and steal that money, which is what's going on here, taking the sales tax that we imposed on our taxpayers as local units of government, means that every sales tax in the state is at risk. Any, any local jurisdiction that's got a sales tax needs to know that the state of Minnesota, with, with this precedent, is ready to go out and raid that money for its purposes, to balance its budget. It's a classic bait and switch, and that's bad business as far as I'm concerned where I come from. Number three, we can't, CTIB can't meet its, 2000, its minimum 2012 commitments with the, the seizure of our of this sixty nine million dollars we cannot so don't kid yourself we cannot meet the obligations that we have the notion the the idea that the paying the bondholders off first that was a nice gesture I will say a nice gesture but you're still seizing revenues that were pledged to the bondholders to the to the retirement of the bond so. I think you, you should not be cavalier about this. Again, it was a nice, nice gesture, but in terms of the integrity of bonds of local units of government, particularly those that rely on sales tax, any good bond council is going to start, the, the alarm bells are going to start going off, and it's going to increase the cost of borrowing in this state uh, for local units of government that rely on the sales tax. That's the kind of precedent that you're setting with this bill. In addition, you're stifling, with this bill, you'll be stifling future investment that's going to hurt Minnesota's economy. And I've got a list here just to give you a sense of orders of magnitude. The payroll on Central Corridor is $380 million. $380 million, the payroll for the construction of Central Corridor. That's going to generate, just a rough estimate, that's got to generate $20 million in income tax alone from that payroll. Now, the state of Minnesota is getting a heck of a bargain out of this. A heck of a bargain. The state puts one buck in, and there's $9 that follow it. So for $1, the state is getting $380 million. For $1, there's $9 of other people's money going into it, including $5 of federal money. So half of this money, half of that payroll is being paid by the federal government, and the other portions are being paid for by counties through their sales tax and property tax. If we, you know, our competitors in other regions around the country that are competing for this federal money, they're laughing at us tonight. In Denver and Phoenix and Houston and Seattle and Portland, they are just, they're going like this. And they're saying, okay, 
we'll get a chance to get this money from the federal government because they're going to walk away from it in the state of Minnesota. That's what this bill does. It walks away from growth and investment in our future that we need to stay economically competitive. That's what this is about. Now, in addition, there's been lots of hand-wringing about operating costs. I've heard that. Oh, my gosh. There's subsidy here. There's subsidy. Well, the Office of Legislative Auditor, the Office of Legislative Auditor, nonpartisan body, they looked at 12 regions around the country, 11 of our peers plus us, and they found that in terms of level of fare box recovery, the amount that the fare box pays for operation, the percentage, we were second in that group. There was only one region in the 12 that was better than we were, and that was San Diego. No other region in the country, no other peer region, according to the legislative auditor, does a better job of paying for the operating costs of its transit system than the Twin Cities other than San Diego. And San Diego, I would argue, Mr. Chairman and members, is an anomaly. U.S. News just rated us the fifth best transit system in the United States of America. That's a good thing for our economy and a good thing for our future. Mr. Chairman, I think these are the actions in this bill. These are the actions of a state that doesn't believe in its future. A state that doesn't believe in its future. It, we shouldn't go down this path. We need to invest in infrastructure. We've had a proud history in this state and a productive history of investing in infrastructure. We've done a good job of strategically doing it on transit. And your local partners, the counties, have done a darn good job of doing exactly what state law said we should do, which is put a tax in place, do it in such a way that we can invest in the expansion of the transit system. So, Mr. Chairman, by my math, this is a $40 million cut in transit. It's $111 million less than the governor was going to invest in transit in his original budget and $122 million less than the governor is investing in his supplemental budget. So I think people need to understand what the truth is. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee members. <clears throat> I'm here to represent uh, Dakota County's point of view uh, of this uh, of the bill that uh, Representative Holberg has uh, uh, brought forth. And I'm here to say that Dakota County does oppose that. Three years ago, the commissioners of five metropolitan counties took a stand to provide a dedicated funding source to build transit in this region. This was a hard vote for policymakers. Everyone knew that there was some opposition to the local sales tax, but by the time the Dakota County Board took this vote, it was with the support of our communities. We promised them, and I say, and our constituents believed, this quarter cent sales tax would be spent to improve the quality of life in their communities, to connect workers and jobs, to slow the growth of congestion, and to provide more ways for people to get uh, to where they need to go. We've made good on our promise to spend this dedicated funding source to build transit. We have corridors already running across the region, including BRT corridors. Central Corridor is now under construction. The County uh, Transportation Improvement Board has helped build the first state-of-the-art bus rapid transit station in Apple Valley. <clears throat> Next month we break ground, I'm speaking of Dakota County, next month we break ground on Cedar Avenue Transitway, BRT, where we entered into construction contracts of more than $30 million. We approve these contracts based on the CTIB commitments for this year and next. In 2008 we took the heat to make this dedicated funding source a reality. We stood firm against the criticism and the naysayers. Now you want to take the proceeds of this local sales tax to, to plug a hole in the state's budget. That's just wrong. Well, it's ridiculous and it's stealing. In addition, if you take this money out of the proceeds of the uh, CTIP board sales tax, you've just imposed a new sales tax on my folks, and those are the folks that live in Dakota County. In this bill, you are about to steal $90 million in, tax, uh, in, 90 million in taxes controlled by the people in five counties and turn it into a $60 million state tax. And like I said before, if that's not stealing, I don't know what it is. Why take money away from a successful program like, like we have started in CTIP? 
And I have to say that you don't want to put your butts on the line. You just want to take the funds from CTIB because you can. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. McDonough. Mr. Chair, committee members, I'm going to talk a little bit about what this sales tax has done for us and what it means to us in Ramsey County. First, I'll remind you what the environment was before this sales tax. When we built Hiawatha, this, the uh, counties had a 17% share to pay for that line on the property tax. The state had a 33% commit, 33 share committed um, that came through the state bonding, and then 50% came from the federal government and half the operating was paid by the Hennepin County um, property taxpayers. Very, very bad way to invest in transit in a metropolitan area. The quarter cent sales tax was brought forward to move the operations off of the property tax. So the 50% share of operating from the local governments now came from a sales tax levied by the five counties. The, the capital share for the state went from 33% down to 10%, and the share for the counties went from 17% on the property tax to 10% on the property tax. A much more um, fiscally responsible way to pay for these lines. What it also did for Central Corridor, which I would like to point out to the, to the committee here, is the number one ranked New Starts line in the country. It came through the FTA's administration during the Bush administration when the C CEI cost effectiveness indicator was pass or fail for any line in this country to move forward. Central Corridor passed that very rigorous test. It has moved forward on data, it's moved forward on the strength of this quarter. It has a ridership, projected ridership of 41,000 riders a day. Once we were able to implement the quarter cent sales tax and we at the local level took that, we were able to be able to position ourselves federally to compete for their for $470 million of federal money because now we had a dedicated funding source that we could commit to move Central Corridor forward. We didn't have to figure out how we were going to do a $300 million lift at the state legislature in bonding. And all of you who have been around here, that's a pretty darn big lift. And I don't know that we would have ever been able to pull that off. And at the same point, we would have been on the hook at the local level for 17% of that on the property tax. So it positioned us well to compete into the future. As Commissioner McLaughlin has pointed out, it, it's not easy for, it's not hard for us to compete extremely well nationally for these dollars because our lines are strong, our metropolitan area is strong. In this, what you're doing right now, we're becoming our worst enemy here as far as moving forward on the build out of this system. I went forward at Ramsey County and I took the vote to support the quarter cent sales tax as six of my seven commissioners did. We did that with the support of the St. Paul Chamber. We went out into the community as a partnership, business, labor, elected officials, mayors, city council members, and that happened throughout the five counties. All of us united that this was the right way to move forward on that investment. And we did that as a partners, all expecting to be able to continue to move forward on using the $90 million in quarter cent sales tax to advance trends. When we went to the citizens and asked for their support, when we went out into the community, the, the commitment was to them was to move transit forward, not to take it backwards, not to levy a quarter cent sales tax. I can tell you for one, I would not have support, I would not have voted for a quarter cent sales tax in Ramsey County to go back out in my community if I knew two years later nothing, the state of Minnesota was going to come back and steal $69 million of that. I would not have done that. I don't know that the St. Paul Chamber would have stood in partnership with me when we went out into the community to talk about this quarter cent sales tax if they knew that in two years the state was going to come back and steal $69 million. I've been up here for 10 years as a county commissioner. I'm president of the state, associate of Minnesota counties. I've talked and testified on numerous topics throughout, throughout my 10 years up here. STLs, mental health, chemical dependency, you have it. I've been up here testifying. And the one area that I think we've built the partnerships in the community, business, labor, mayors, county commissioners, legislators, Republicans, Democrats, has been in transportation. It hasn't always been a smooth road, but it's probably been the strongest partnership we've had in er any area that we do in county government. And right now you are absolutely destroying all the work that's been done with all the partners to move transit forward in the metropolitan area. Thank you. 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 Thank